1942. The place, an island in the Pacific. An island that children in future years will read about in their history books. An island with some strange name like Guadalcanal, New Guinea, Tulagi, or Tarawa. Our nation is fighting for its life here on these bloody beaches, taking the first decisive steps on the yet unknown road to defeat or victory. And these are the men who will decide which it is to be. Men who are now soldiers, but who just a few short months ago were clerks and college students, lawyers and stockbrokers, salesmen and truck drivers and farmers. It is not an easy war. It's slow, hard, hot, dirty work for these citizens in uniform. But there comes a blessed time in each battle when there's a pause. The guns are quiet and there's a chance to sit down, to rest, to take it easy until it's time to move again. Each man has his own way of spending these precious moments of relaxation to forget the war around him. And the latest hit records were provided through the courtesy of Radio Tokyo, along with the subtle and persuasive propaganda of Tokyo Rose. But early in 1942, a new radio signal is heard, a stronger and more familiar signal, one from home. You are listening to the Armed Forces Radio Service. All of us, wherever we may be, have had some connection with this story. And it's one of those things that may not have occurred to us. For example, how many times have we heard... This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. And the announcer of many of tomorrow's TV programs will say... This program has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. These are common phrases. We take them pretty much for granted. But 20 years ago, they were a voice from home for our men who didn't know when or if they would be going home. In order to provide radio programs overseas, our military leaders turned to the entertainment industry. Not just for stars, but for all the talent necessary to build the world's largest network. From motion picture studios, from radio networks, from advertising agencies and record companies, and every other phase of show business came the writers and directors and musicians and the newsmen and announcers. The engineers and technicians who were charged with the mission of providing radio entertainment to our sailors, soldiers, airmen and marines, wherever they may be. This was the start of the Armed Forces Radio Service, carrying the sounds of home to men who were far from home. Not only the familiar shows from commercial networks, but special programs just for them. The G.I. Journal. It's the G.I. Journal. Hello, Kay. Hello, Lucille Ball. I adore you. I worship you. Oh, every beat of my heart is a flame that burns your name in my soul. Okay, Kay, don't be ridiculous. Well, you just met me. Hey, listen, a chow hound doesn't have to wait for dinner to be hungry, you know. Hey, what am I going to get, a kiss or a quart of milk? from the United States of America. Stand by, Americans. Stand by, servicemen of the United Nations. Mail call, salute your home state. And tonight, special greetings to you servicemen from the state of California. Ready to speed this sunny salute on its way is an adopted sweater girl of the Bear State. She's all wool and a sarong wide, Miss Dorothy Labour. Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the service men and women of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Introducing your master's ceremonies for this session is kind of a tough job because, well, he's such a stranger to Command Performance. In fact, he hasn't been on the show since an hour before he left for the South Pacific. It's Bob Hope.
But I really had a wonderful trip. Wherever I went, the soldiers toasted me, and now I'm back. A guy can stand getting hot foots for just so long, you know. <laughs> you know, the weather down there is like it is here. Of course, they have a light sprinkle now and then. A light sprinkle, that's South Pacific. For man the boats, boys, the island disappeared again. <laughs> But I was glad to get back and see that Hollywood hasn't changed much. much. Slacks are still the rage. You can see everything in slacks, except slack. Well, look, they got an armed guard around the stage. <laughs> hey, Pam! Pop! Oh, look at this. Well, all right, Bob. Is your griddle hot? Yeah, my, I think so. My, oh, my... Oh. <laughs> that'll, do, that'll do, Bob. Now, the steak, please. Oh, uh, well, here it is, fellas. Beautiful. A porterhouse steak three inches thick. The only one in captivity. You're gonna give that a hot foot? Into the frying pan. <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh, yes. There you are, fellas. That's the sound of a steak sizzling. Fellas, that's the steak. That's not me sizzling. That's the steak. <laughs> and fellas, I wish I could cook a big steak for each and every one of you. From America to all our men in blue, our boys in khaki too, our tough Marines, our Coast Guard, our Army nurses true, we thank you so much. Fellas, this doesn't rhyme, but one of these days soon we'll be seeing you. In the meantime, this is Bob Hope thanking you for those letters to Command Performance, Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Speaking for everybody on Command Performance and saying the best of the best in the USA. So long. She's on her way, men. From us to you, every week till it's over, over there. When the war was over, when the last shot was fired and the last hill taken, we found that it really wasn't over. There were still important jobs for our armed forces, holding the ground that had cost so many lives guarding the skies that now were free of the threat of death, patrolling the seas where once we had been so badly outnumbered. And we found, too, that peace is not very exciting, not hard and violent and spectacular like war. Now, by contrast, it is quiet and dull and not very dramatic. Our service personnel now scattered in a thousand different places all over the world have a great need not only for entertainment, but for up-to-date information about important speeches, debates, and news of the world. They must be reached wherever they are stationed. Now, there are three ways of getting information and entertainment to them. By radio, television, and by the quickest and most immediate way, shortwave. From shortwave radio stations in Los Angeles and New York, powerful signals reach them, whether on land or at sea. From Los Angeles, up to Alaska, across the broad Pacific to Midway, Japan, Korea, to Taiwan, Okinawa, ships at sea, to Guam, and to the Republic of the Philippines, and down to the Panama Canal Zone. From New York, up to Greenland and Iceland, across the Atlantic to Europe, to the Azores, North Africa, Greece, and down to the islands of the Caribbean Sea. Into the newsrooms of these two shortwave stations come reports of national and international events by direct wire from the major commercial and military news services. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service in New York City, heard round the world through the facilities of WBOU at Bound Brook, New Jersey, and WDSI at Brentwood, Long Island. Stay tuned now for the news which follows next from AFRS New York. You're tuned in to Final Edition, the top news of the day from the AFRS newsroom in New York City, the news capital of America. Good evening. Tonight, Final Edition includes reports from Paris, Hong Kong, and Washington. 
This is Army PFC Doug Llewellyn reporting the top story of this day from UN headquarters, New York. Here also are recorded and broadcast news interviews, sports events, and great speeches. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. From powerful transmitters on the east and west coasts, half a million kilowatts of power each, and each strong enough to be heard clearly half the world away, the signal is sent and received. This is AFRTS shortwave at Los Angeles, broadcasting on VOA transmitter KCBR at Delano, California. Bottom half of the eighth, four to two Braves. Snyder at the plate. Burdett to the windup and the pitch. There's a swing and a drive deep to right field. This one may go. Going way back for it. And the ball is going, going. It is gone. Now, we've mentioned three ways of getting information and entertainment to our service personnel overseas. You've seen the importance of the shortwave stations. Now we come to another important part of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, providing network radio programs by means of recordings. Now, not every program has to be rushed overseas or broadcast immediately by shortwave. Some shows are just as entertaining, just as interesting after a short delay. Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney recording their show for release at a more convenient time. Say, Rosie, Buddy was really moving there, wasn't he? Oh, he was marvelous. You today. know, he inspired me to do a little work myself. Do anything for you? Yeah, I think I'll do a duet. Like to do a duet? Yeah, what well. song? Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge, but I accept. Buddy. Before I let you yes, talk. I can. You're turning purple yes, there. Yes, I can. No. Can. Network programs of all kinds. Programs from all major networks are recorded in Los Angeles on magnetic tape, which must be carefully reviewed and edited. The United States government cannot endorse any commercial products, so all such references must be deleted from the programs. And let us say here that we are very grateful to the various commercial organizations, the sponsors of radio and television programs, and the networks themselves, who have spent millions of dollars on talent and time in the production of these programs, with no charge to the armed forces. Since there will be some delay before these programs are finally broadcast, further editing is necessary. Mentions of a particular season, or the weather, or a current event, for example and the programs are evaluated in terms of Department of Defense policies. Now, when these deletions are made, announcements pertinent to the military audience are prepared and inserted to replace what has been taken out. Now, here is the reel of tape you just saw recorded and edited. Here is the same program, 30 minutes of it, recorded on a 12-inch unbreakable plastic transcription. This is similar to the long play records that are bought for home listening. Nearly 100 different radio programs are prepared in this manner each week. It takes a great many of these records to keep this worldwide network in operation. 5,000 per week, a quarter of a million each year. In the 20 years of its existence, the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service has sent more than 9 million records overseas. 
In addition to the top-rated network programs, the weekly shipment includes a generous supply of musical selections. Through the cooperation of all segments of the music industry, we have access to music of every description, music to suit every taste. When a shipment is ready, a week's supply of radio entertainment in one package, it travels across the seas by air until it finally arrives at its destination. One of the Armed Forces radio outlets, the station in Trinidad, for example. And now for Navy journalist Ralph Higgins at Port-au-Prince and Navy seaman Jerry Dickinson and Bob Stockton at Tobago. Here's Ella Fitzgerald to sing Mountain Greenery. Korea may be playing the same tune. This is the headquarters of the American Forces Network in Europe, located in the former castle of Baron von Brüning near Frankfurt, Germany. The production staff is large enough to do the many jobs that are required for such an operation. Writers, directors, engineers, disc jockeys, newsmen, librarians. This headquarters, like the Far East Network in Tokyo or the Alaskan Network, is similar to a regional network in commercial broadcasting in the United States. It is the home office for 63 armed forces stations in Germany and France. Here in these studios, as in the studios of all armed forces stations throughout the world, from the islands of Crete in the Mediterranean to the far off islands in the Pacific, the staff originates its own programs. Here they help to maintain morale and enable local commanders to reach the servicemen directly, either on a regular basis or in case of emergency. News events of local interest are carried immediately and directly to the service personnel in the area. At Tempelhof Airport in Berlin, actress Helen Hayes and members of her company traveling under the auspices of the State Department are interviewed upon their arrival. This basketball game in a gymnasium in Alaska can't be attended by everyone who wants to see it, so it's brought to them by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Nighttime in Alaska, but it's still daylight here in Korea, and an announcer from the Armed Forces Korean Network takes his tape recorder to a forward area to get the opinions of one of our soldiers. This might be termed the military equivalent of a man on the street program. And in the studios of the Far East Network in Tokyo, a Japanese girl sits at a microphone to tell American servicemen and their families about the points of interest, the things to do and the things to see during their tour of duty in Japan. One more element, television. That's right. The television programs that are seen at home can also be seen in over 30 locations around the globe by the men and women in uniform. And most of them are in isolated spots, Greenland, Iceland, the Middle East, Korea, Okinawa, and the Philippines. Now, these are the Armed Forces television stations. They get their TV programs on film. This is the television recording studio in Los Angeles. As network programs are being broadcast, they are recorded here, often on videotape first, where they await transfer to film. High-quality motion picture cameras photograph the programs from television picture tubes. Just as the radio programs are edited, so are the television programs carefully viewed. The Los Angeles headquarters prepares and photographs special announcements for insertion in the edited film. Sometimes the inserted announcements are filmed live at the Los Angeles studios with well-known personalities taking part. <laughs> oh, uh, hello there. Uh, I'm Don Knotts, and uh, I set this so I'd be wide awake to tell you all about absentee voting. You know, your vote is your way of having a say in who runs our government. And no matter where you're stationed, you can vote by absentee ballot. So don't get caught napping. Send for your absentee ballot now. These announcements contain information of particular interest to our servicemen the observance of significant anniversaries, 
suggestions whereby our servicemen can improve relations with people in other countries, the rights and responsibilities of citizenship, up-to-date information on the benefits of a service career. When these spots have been inserted, the edited films are prepared for shipment overseas. The programs selected represent a cross-section of American television, the top shows in various categories. It takes thousands of reels of film to keep this television network on the air. Every week, some 55 hours of programs are prepared for shipment overseas. Some of these boxes are headed for the below zero ice pack of Greenland. Some will land on equatorial islands like Puerto Rico or the Azores. Some will feel the hot desert blasts of North Africa. Every week, another shipment must arrive on time at 30 separate places around the globe. Here is one of them, Clark Air Force Base in the Philippine Islands. Upon arrival, the films are inspected and scheduled for telecast. As nearly as possible, the programs are scheduled for the same time as they would be seen in the States. While most of our overseas station personnel are military, some positions are filled by civilians, including citizens of host countries where we have armed forces stations. In addition to film, some stations have the capability of producing their own live television programs. Here at Clark, for example, one of the most popular is a children's program enjoyed by the families who accompany their men to this base. And every Armed Forces television station, a big one in the Philippines or a small one in Alaska, has the responsibility of keeping our servicemen and women well informed. Each broadcast day contains scheduled newscasts, news of national and international events, items of local interest. No matter how remote their location, our audience gets the news while it is news. There is no doubt that a letter from home is the number one morale booster for a serviceman. But right behind it must surely come the closeness that he feels through direct contact with American radio and television. Well, this is a big story we've covered in a very short time. And what is the cost? Well, for all that you have seen, radio and television, operations around the clock all year long. Each American taxpayer contributes about four cents. Yes, for the price of a postage stamp, the morale of the armed forces around the world is being maintained, and they are being kept well informed through radio and television. Now, none of this would be possible, however, without the aid of the people of commercial radio and television, the sponsors, the advertising agencies, who give us complete assistance in providing their programs without cost. The actors, singers, musicians, the writers, directors, producers, the members of the various guilds, crafts, and unions who cooperate with us. The famous stars and the unknown disc jockey in khaki or navy blue. The audience at home and the audience overseas. An Air Force family in Japan. A sailor on board ship somewhere in the Mediterranean. A soldier in an army hospital. They are all part of our story. The story of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Born out of necessity in time of war, it has become indispensable in time of peace. Wherever our servicemen and women go, we go with them, as close as the dial on their radio or TV set. Now, this voice of ours is strong. The signal is loud and clear. Through it, we will continue to provide for the well-being of our armed forces overseas. Music